Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in. Today, we're talking about Adobe Illustrator and how we can use Adobe Illustrator to get nice modern vector graphics to use in our e-learning projects or even in infographics. And yeah, I mean, you can use these, these vector graphics for really any kind of um, web projects. So I'm pretty excited for this. I, I use this style in a lot of my e-learning courses and I will show you some examples, but let's dive right into this here. And again, this is an interactive session. So if you do have any questions, feel free to add them to the chat or using the ask a question tab at the bottom of the screen. And I will do my best to answer them as I'm able to. All right. So the first thing I wanted to really show here is the difference between vector graphics and raster or roster graphics. But basically, we see these two pictures of space here, right? So this one is just a, a JPEG, so something something dot JPG. Um, and see, it looks okay if we zoom in, you know, well, it gets kind of pixelated as you can see here. If we make it smaller, whoops, let me constrain it. You know, if we make it smaller, the quality maybe looks a little bit better, but if we size it up, it's going to start looking a lot more blurry as you might be able to see here. If we zoom in, you see it's just so, um, you see how blurry this is? This is a roster graphic, okay? When it's sized up, this is just made up of a set number of pixels. So when you size it up, it kind of stretches the space in between those pixels and it doesn't really look so amazing. So you can see here, like it definitely loses the quality on a resize. Now vector graphics, which you can work with in tools like Adobe Illustrator are a bit different. When you resize vector graphics, um, they scale up to like they add more pixels so that it still maintains that sharpness. So if you see here, if we resize this one really big, it still looks really sharp if we zoom in, right? So compare that to this one and we can even make this bigger and it will still look exactly the same. So this is what I mean when I say vector graphics. So we can, we can make these go as big or as small as we want and um, I mean, when we export them, we have to make sure that we export them to the right size, which we'll get to later. But when you're working with them, you know, say, say we had this in this in an e-learning course at a smaller size, um, and then we're like, okay, wait, we want this e-learning course to be full screen. Uh, you could you can make the graphics bigger in a tool like Adobe Illustrator, and then export them bigger. If you try to export this one bigger than it already is, it's just going to look blurry in your e-learning course. Okay, so is everyone good on this difference? I mean, it's not really a formal definition difference, but it is the difference generally between raster graphics and vector graphics, okay? So let me show you where we can get some of these vector graphics. So the first thing I did, this right here is on freepick.com. Um, I think I pay $10 a month for this and you can use any of these visuals without attribution. So, really affordable and they also have some really good uh, visuals. So check this out. If I just type in space, if I only go to show me photos, we're not going to see any vector graphics included in this. So these ones, they'll be a set size. I think by default, they'll be really big, like 6,000 pixels wide or something. So the quality will be okay. Um, but if we set this to vectors, now everything we see here, we can size up infinitely basically, and it will still look really crisp like this one does here. Okay. Um, now it gets a lot cooler working with vectors in Illustrator. You know, being able to size it up bigger is one benefit, but you can also change every little aspect you see in these illustrations. In this one, if I wanna change the color of this planet, for example, I'm out of luck. I would have to go in Photoshop and fiddle around with that and hope it turns out how I want. But with vectors, you can change the color of everything basically and the size. You can add and remove elements. Um, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of that. So let's see, say I just want this earth. I can copy that. Let's see, I'll paste it out here. Okay, well this one has a lot of layers to it. This is obviously really complex. 
let's work with this this pack right here okay so imagine we're doing a course about space or something and we and we want to use some of these icons um obviously as a whole sheet this isn't very helpful so and let me give you an example of like what a final product might look like using this approach so this is just a menu screen from um, a, a project i did for a client and you see here how, how i have all these little icons these all came from bigger icon packs or bigger images and i i pull out the icon and recolor it use based on the brand colors and then whenever you click on one of these buttons, it will open up a light box. You see the illustration is right by its side. Um, so again, these were all different colors. They were included in larger scenes. This is the focus of today's session. It's how to pull out these things from larger scenes, recolor them, resize them as you need for use in Illustrator. Okay. So you don't need to be some kind of graphic design pro. Like It's not like I'm designing these from scratch. That's not my strong suit. It's just reusing existing graphics um, efficiently. So here's this space link. So you just type in whatever you want and you can you know, say we're looking for trophies. You can look up trophies. Like there's so many um, different types of illustrations in this. Happy birthday. We could pull out one of these cakes or this flame. Really anything you see in a vector illustration you can pull out. So I'm gonna go back to that space pack. We'll take a look at this. You just open it up and you click download from free pick. So I'm gonna open this up and you see here, okay, look, so there's this JPEG file and this .eps file, okay? So um, you'll either see a .eps or a .ai file in this package. Those are the vector graphics that you'll be able to work with and modify. This JPEG file is just going to be like a regular image, a raster graphic. So let me show you this. I'm going to bring this uh, JPEG file into Illustrator. Let me um, export it first. Okay, so here's the JPEG. So we have this JPEG file. It looks nice and crisp, right? But remember, if we size up a raster graphic, it's going to start getting a little bit more... Um, blurry you see this now when we zoom in how blurry that is so that's no good and then also you notice if i click this it's just the whole selection i can't click in and select any of these individual graphics right so what are my options here to actually like crop this try to remove the background with another tool that's not going to work so what we can do i'm going to get rid of this one we're going to open up this eps file this stands for a encapsulated postscript um, this just means you can open it with a tool like Illustrator or any other design tools that can work with vector graphics. I'm not as familiar with other options because I use Illustrator. So I double click this .eps. Oh, good point, uh, Khaled. Nice call out. I zoom in. I'm holding down the Alt key on my keyboard, and then I'm using my mouse wheel. That's how I'm zooming in and out really efficiently like this. And then uh, Matt just gave a, another point. You can do Command plus or minus on a Mac. I think on a Mac too, you can use the touchpad to just um, pinch or not pinch, but the opposite of a pinch. <laughs> uh, you can use that. I think you would be able to use that on your trackpad, just like you would zooming in on a photo in another application. But yeah, I'm just using command and then scrolling in with my, um, with my mouse wheel, if you have a mouse. So you notice now this is a little bit different, okay? If I see now, if I click one of these things, I'm selecting one individual square. And let's look at something else. I can select all of these, and now I will expand this out really big. And if I zoom in now, it's still perfect quality. You see, there's none of that pixel pixelation we were seeing on the JPEG. So I know I'm really driving this point home, but it's a very important distinction between these these types of graphics. And it's what it's um it's it's just a different nature working with vector graphics as opposed to working with rasters because you would use Photoshop to work with raster graphics and add filters and, you know, touch things up and do that fun stuff. But these are really cool because like I said, we can change anything we want in these visuals. So let's select this one right here. Now, when you, when you start working with one of these vector files, things will be grouped in different ways. 
So grouping is a very, um, it's something that you really need to be aware of here. So notice when I click on this in the top left, really small, it will tell you what I have selected. It tells me that this object type is a group. Okay, so I can right click this and I can click ungroup. And now you notice I can click individual things from this. Okay, I don't ever actually do the right click, but what I, what I do is I do control shift G. Let me actually do a little demo out here to make this easier. I'm just making a few shapes here, right? So these are not a group. I can move these around individually. If I want to make these um, into a group, I'll select one. I'll hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then select another one. So now you see both of these are selected at the same time, right? They're not grouped yet because if I click off and then click back on, there's still just one thing selected. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select this other ob object. And now to group them, I can, I can right click and press group or I can press control G on my keyboard. So pretty easy to remember G for group. So with those two things selected, watch, I'll press control G. And now it tells me in the top left, I have a group selected. So if I click off and click back on, automatically it will have both of those things selected, you see? And if I want to ungroup them, I'll do control shift G. And now it says I'm just selecting a rectangle. So if I click off and click back, they're now once again ungrouped. Okay, and, and bear with me, like this might not seem super relevant right now, but you really need to understand how these groups work before we start working with uh, these, these groups over here, because that's what these all are. Control shift G ungroups. So it takes away the group. So I just grouped them using control G and now they're grouped. If I do control, see, I click off, I click back and they're both selected. That's how I know it's a group. If I do control shift G, now they are not grouped anymore. I click off, I click back. It's just one individual item, okay? So I'm going to take this a step further. I'm going to group these two over here. And now I have a group and a rectangle. I can make, I can make these two things into a group. So you can have nested groups, if that makes sense. So I'll select this rectangle, I'll hold down shift and click on this group. And now I'll press control G again. And now I have one big group made up of a one rectangle right here and a group over here. Okay. So, and you notice how I just did that when I first click on this, it, it selects the whole group. But if you double click on an element of the group, it will drill down into that group. So watch, I'm going to double click this rectangle. And now I'm into that group and I can select this rectangle individually, even though overall it's still a group. So I can press the escape key on my keyboard and now I'm back out of the group. And if I select it again, it's all still together. So you don't have to necessarily ungroup things to edit them. You can just use this double click option to get into the group. So see, I'm at the first layer of the grouping right now by double clicking. Now I can double click on this group to get into this group right here. And it will kind of tell you the hierarchy, you know? So you have this, this overall layer, and then you're going into this first level of the group. And now we're going into this second layer of the group. Okay. So this might have been a lot for it. If you're just getting started with Illustrator, I just wanted to illustrate that concept, no pun intended. Um, but let's take a look at that now, as far as these illustrations go. Let's say we only want this, um, what do we want from this? Okay, this rocket ship looks kind of nice. So let's say we'll take this. So what I'll usually do is I'll drag this out here, whatever I actually want to work with. I'll click on it. I'll press control shift G to ungroup this first layer of the group. I'll see if this thing is available. Okay, this is good. So now we have this, this, and this, but this right here is still a group. You see, it's made up of all of these other elements like this, um, these different shapes. And I'm just spam clicking to kind of drill down into this group. You see how many layers this thing is grouped. Let me just press escape to get out of that. I don't really want these little diamonds around it. So I can do control shift G to ungroup it again and see. And yeah, so you can kind of like these developers who make these graphics will kind of will try to usually group them in some sort of intuitive way so that as you shed off the group layers, you can get these more um, individual objects. Sometimes I'll do that though. I'll do that ungrouping 
and then every single thing will be a separate shape. So that, that's kind of rare. Like I said, the illustrators kind of usually account for that and try to make it easy. Um, but that is why you need to be aware of how the grouping works. So if, if that was the case, I would just ungroup it. Every single, and watch, I'll, I'll emulate that by just spam pressing control shift G to keep ungrouping this entire thing. So now everything I click is its own actual shape, you see? And sure enough, I can, I can recolor these however I want. So I'll select this one, I'll hold down shift. What's over here? Okay, so this is like some kind of over shadow overlay, you see? So we can, and then we can get drill into these different shapes beneath. We can change the color. You see, so this is how I make, I, I worked with these images here and like made them match the brand colors. Um, it's just by going into these, you know, selecting these different shapes and, and changing them um, to make them match the brand colors. Okay, is there any questions about how I just got this away? And let's do it with another one, okay? So let's, let's say we want this earth from here. I'm going to select the group, press Control Shift G. I'll see what we have left. It's this earth with the little diamonds around it. I'll press Control Shift G again. And now the earth is free. I can, I can drag a box around these little um, diamonds. I can press the delete key and they'll be gone. I can get rid of this background. You know, so now we have a nice earth right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, these three things are still grouped. So I'm just going to delete this group. And now I will drag a box around this whole rocket ship and press control G to regroup it. Okay. So see how we're picking out these nice different um, elements from over here. Is there any trick to get the exact shapes you want? Kira says um, she's having some difficulty selecting the exact shape she wants. So part of the, the reason for that difficulty, I think, is because you might be selecting groups. Okay. So that's what I was talking about with that control shift G. Like try to bring whatever you're working with out, away from the rest of the composition. And then you can start breaking down the, the groups. Um, another option, if you're trying say, see this, this moon shape right here, say I'm trying to get into that. Um, if I just click it, it selects the whole thing because this thing is grouped. But if I double click, now I'm in, now I'm in this next layer of the group. I'll double click again. I'm in a, yet another deeper layer. I'll double click again. And now I actually have this half moon shadow shape. So those, so those are the two options, the two ways to do this. You can just ungroup everything. So everything already is broken down to its base element, or you can use that double click feature to get deeper inside of the group and, and edit those different elements. Okay. Are there any other questions about this? Let's see what else I have here. So we looked at a little bit of how to source the vectors and I'm sure there are, you know, I use free pick almost exclusively just because I can usually find what I, what I need here. So let's look at this, like, you know, create, I probably looked up pen. Let's see. You see, I think that's literally like this right here is this. <laughs> so you see, so that's one example. I didn't even have to worry about getting it away from the rest of the composition, but you can take anything you see here and recolor it, resize it, do whatever you want with it. Um, let's take another example. Let's see. I don't know what I looked up for this, but let's just look up like manage. Okay, you see maybe, okay, so if you see something like this, uh, let's look at some more examples. You know, something like this, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I want, you can, you can take out one individual person. You can take out just this woman sitting on this like wheel. You can even take out the individual wheel. You can recolor the scene how you want. Really cool stuff here. Uh, I think another good place to probably get them is Adobe stock. Do you see how you can, you can set it to images? There's, there's going to be a vector option. Let's look up pen. And then there's going to be some sort of way to filter this to only show us vectors, I'm sure. So you see here, photos, illustrations, or vectors. So we want to choose that vectors option whenever we're on one of these sites, because that means we're going to be able to work with it in the same way we're doing here. 
I am on the paid version, Matt. Yeah. And it's only 10 bucks a month. It lets you use it without attribution. It gives you access to all of the, these premium ones you see here. So I think it's super affordable and I get a, I get a ton of value out of that. Um, I, I first came across it in like an articulate here. It was like e-learning challenge. Someone was using like all of these farm animals and made it look like really cute, like the, the project. And um, I, I, I'm like, where did you get these graphics? And they were like, oh, free pick. And yeah, you, you know, they were just taking out different animals from these scenes. So I hope, you know, using what we just saw, should we, do you guys want to see another example? Like, I mean, I guess there's no harm. Like, let's just, let's look at another example. So we'll download this. We'll open up the zipped folder. You see here is that EPS file we're looking for. Sometimes it will, it will be an actual Adobe Illustrator file and it will be, for example, 572.ai. I think a lot of times they just use this EPS option to make it more compatible with more tools. Okay, so let's open up this EPS file. So we have all of these different um, farm animals. Let's say we want this, this turkey right here. Okay, so first order of business is to see what we're working with. So this one is, is a clip group. We don't need to get into that. We're gonna work with it in the same way. I'm going to do control shift G. Okay, so okay, so this is actually good. I'm glad we did this example. So this one, I'm doing control shift G. Wait, let's see. And it's not bringing us into those more individual elements. So clip groups, like I guess, do function a little bit different than regular groups, but we will use this same click. Uh, we're gonna click into this. Oh wow, they're really not making this easy on us. You see, because they didn't, this one, the, like I said, some developers or illustrators will make it so like it's grouped as you drive in to make it easier to pull things out that you need. But I mean, as you can see in this example, this little, this little guy is all separate pieces. So we can't really pull them out super easily. So there are a couple of ways we can handle this. So I'm going to start deleting these background elements to make, um, to make it a bit easier to access this, this little guy we want access to. So I'm just clicking on these and deleting. Okay, let's get rid of this grass beneath his feet. So now what I can do, now that there are none of these other shapes around him, is we can drag, oh wait, there's still something else. Oh, come on. Okay, so what I just did there, okay, let me undo that. Okay, redo. So I'm doing control Z for undo, control shift Z for redo, in case anyone was curious about that. So what I was trying to do is I'm trying to, I'm trying to drag a box around only this turkey. That's what I'm trying to do. You notice if I try that right now, it is selecting this whole, you know, you can see this um, outline, which means that this, this whole thing is selected. What's actually being selected is this white background. So if I double click and then click again, I can get access to, it's not even a white background, it's just like a, a clip group, I guess is what it's, it's called. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm gonna try dragging over this again. Oh my gosh, it's still giving us the whole thing. Come on. Maybe, or is it gonna make us like shift click all of this? And I'm glad we're doing this. This is the most, I'll tell you right now, this is the most convoluted one I've ever worked with. <laughs> most of the time I pull stuff like the developers have done a really good job um, putting it together. So here's what I did. So I clicked into the clip, clip group. So again, it's being treated like an overall group. Everything's moving together. I'm double clicking into it. And now you can see right here, I'm inside of this click group. You can see the, the color changes a little bit up there. That toolbar appears. So I'm going to zoom in now that I'm inside of the clip group, I can drag this box I was talking about around this turkey. Okay. So you see how I got this whole thing selected now? What I'm going to do to make this easier to work with, does anyone have any ideas of my first order of business for this, this turkey? Actually, I think a lot of people will catch the replay, so um, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna hang around too long. We, we want to group this turkey. So if you answered it, good job. <laughs> so I'm gonna press Control G. And now when I click on this turkey, I can actually move him around as a whole, you see? So that's why we wanted him grouped. Again, that was inside of the clip group. So when I click on this, the whole thing will still be grouped. I'll double click to drill one layer down. Now I'm inside of the clip group and I will click on this turkey. What I'm going to do to get him out of the clip group is press control X. 
you can also do control C. So we want to either copy or cut him from this group. So I'm gonna do control X. I'm gonna click outside of the clip group. You notice that bar isn't there anymore. And now I'm just going to do control V to paste him back into the scene. Okay, so just dragging it away wouldn't have been enough. I'm going to undo that. So I can click into here, get him. I'll drag him away. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. So I'll, I'll click into here. I'll drag him away. Yeah, he's like not even showing up outside of this clip group because it must have some kind of masking feature here. Or, or yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mask. So. That's not going to work. We can't just drag him away from here. We have to cut him or copy him from the scene and then get out of the clip group and then paste back in. All right. So that was the most complex one you're going to be facing in this case. And again, yeah, say we want, um, say we want this little sheep guy or this little goat again. So hopefully this will be easier now. We're inside of the clip group. Let's get rid of the stuff around. The reason I'm getting rid of this is because right now, if I try to draw a box around this guy, it's going to have all this other stuff selected. So that's why I'm getting rid of this. Let's get rid of these bushes and stuff. I'm just trying to clear the area around them to make sure I only get him. Okay, so now once we have this, we can draw that box around him. Um, it's not going to be perfect. Let me get rid of this fence. But you see how how not user friendly this this illustrator made this one. <laughs> they didn't really intend for you to pick and choose these pieces. So there's a couple of little pieces you can see, like a little green speck. I'm just gonna shift click it to deselect it. It's not a big deal. But I'll do Control G to group this guy. It's Control X to cut him from the scene, and then Control V again to paste him outside of it. Uh, can you paste it in a new project? Oh yeah, I, I don't. I think that would work. But what you're going to realize is if you just try to copy this and paste it into Storyline, you might not see great results. Let's see what that looks like here. Okay, so we can get him over here, but we had no control over these export settings. Say we want him to be big. Look at this, because you notice how on these I had them small like this, but then I had them show up big over here. Imagine how that would have looked if I tried to copy and paste it right from Illustrator. It would have looked horrible. <laughs> Kira asks if there's a way to know before selecting a vector if it will be if it will be user friendly or not. No, not from free pick alone. Like you can't tell. Like you can tell with this, it's more of a scene. Whereas um, the this this one over here, like it's clearly separated out more into individual icons. So. This one's obviously intended to be used individually. So you could probably make some judgments that way. Like, okay, yeah, this, this illustrator probably made this a bit easier to work with. Um, some things that are clearly meant as a cohesive scene, like this one, it might not be so easy to pull a hay bale out of. Most of the time it is. Like most of the time these people really do um, use the groups and groupings intentionally. Like this one, I can almost guarantee these animals will be grouped and it will be easy to work with. This is actually really nice. So, so this is the, so once you know these basic workflows, like you can you can use packs like this and keep really consistent imagery if you find a pack like this. So, are we feeling good about that? I'm really glad we did that second example. I hope that made sense. Clip groups are a bit more confusing, but those are the two things I'm doing. I'm doing Control Shift G and Control G for handling the groupings, and I'm using the double clicking to drive into these clip groups and different groups to select the different things and pull out what I need. So just from, if you are working with a clip group, try to get whatever you want to work with outside of that clip group like we did here. So this is only one aspect. So we, so we, we see now how to pull these things out of the scene. We need to know how to actually get them in a tool like Storyline or InDesign or Captivate or whatever tool it is that you're working with where you want these graphics. So we're going to move, so we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be exporting. Okay. Does anyone have any colors about this? Should we talk about recoloring at all? So recoloring can, can be either trickier or easier depending on, let me show you some, some tips for recoloring. 
So I'm going to double click to get into this group right here. I can see now I have one of these wings selected. There's a button in Illustrator that will make your life a lot easier for recoloring, okay? So I'm up here in the taskbar, and do you see this select similar objects button? It looks like a, a tr an arrow with like two selections, okay? So I'm so if you press that drop down, you can check, okay, how are we going to determine if it's a similar object or not? Right now, it's going to check for all of this stuff, fill color, stroke color, fill and stroke, all of that. No, no need to worry. Um, but I'm going to select this and notice it selected that, that other wing, right? Because they're both the same color. It would be a little harder to just select this wing because you notice they, this, this illustrator added this shadow. It's just like a gray um, overlay to try to add that shadow effect. So uh, when you are drilling into these, you might find elements like that. Don't, you know, no need to worry. You can just move it out of the way. You can get rid of it if you don't want it. We'll just move it out of the way for now um, so you can get a better idea of what's going on here. So I'll, I'll press this Select Similar Objects button, and now it's selecting both of these wings because they're both the same color. And here we have this color panel. This is just a floating window for me. If you want, if you want to access these different windows, like you know these alignment tools, I've really driven this home in these previous storyline workshops we've done. You'll probably recognize these very well if you've been attending those workshops. We're not going to dive into that right now, though. Um, but if you are missing one of these windows, you can just go to this window tab at the top, and then for you know, since we're working with color, you can select the color window to make it appear, or at least show you where it is. Because everyone's worked, everyone's setup might look a little different here. Okay, so. You notice there are two little rectangles here. And again, this might be more beginner for some people, but we're, we're talking about fill color. And this is a fill color, you know, everything inside. Let me illustrate this really quick just so that you know what's going on. So I'm drawing a rectangle. So this right here, everything inside is the fill. If I click on this one with like the donut hole taken out of it, this is the stroke. Okay, so let's say I give this a black stroke. You see now it has that stroke around the outside of the shape. Okay. So if you don't want a stroke, you make sure this stroke one is in front and then we would just press this none option. Okay. And, and, and if we want to change, so right now, and the reason I'm showing you this is because if you select a shape and you're like, oh yeah, I want to change this color to, to blue, I'll click on this and I can click blue now, but it's changing the stroke because the stroke is the one in front. So that's something to be aware of when you're working with colors in Illustrator. So I'm gonna get rid of that stroke. I'm gonna click back over to the fill and a really, a shortcut for this, if you want to remember one, is just to press the X key on your keyboard. And you see it's automatically switching between the stroke and the fill options. Okay, so we want, we're worried about the fill. So um, as long as that one's at the forefront, we can either use this wheel to change the colors if we know if we know the hex code we want, we can we can change it to that. Um, so let's apply this now to our spaceship. So I'll select, I'll double click to get inside of the group. I will select similar objects. Another option is just to hold down Shift and select this other one. And let's say I want all of these red because you notice here the red FF4 F54. See, this is a slightly different red in this illustration. That's why I didn't select all of it. It's it's slightly off color. So let's say I want to I want to do all of it. So I can click on one of these. I can do select similar objects, and it will select these two little caps right here. And now I'll just hold down the Shift key, select both of these, and um, this ring was selected as well. So now notice when you look at the fill color, it's a question mark because two of the things have one fill color, and four of the things has, have a different fill color. But whatever we change this to it will change all of those colors. Okay, you see how we did that? So we can do it, I'll undo, we can do one thing at a time. You know, I can change this to 1F, 1F, 1F. This is just like my website, like black color. So that's just why I'm changing it to this. But if we can, we can click one of these, hold down shift and select the other options. And then once all of those are selected, we can just type in the new hex code we wanna change it to. Okay. Any questions about that? 
Um, and now this blue color, again, I'll double click to get into the clip group. I'll select these little blue outlines right here. And let's say we want to go with like a nice hot pink outline. I'm just going to play it by eye. A neoni pink. <laughs> but I think you're, you're getting the idea here. Okay. And then we can even drag our shadow back in if we, if we like that effect. So I don't think this pink is a great color, but it doesn't really matter what color we're changing it to. I'll click out of here. And there you have it. That's how we can recolor these different parts of the illustration. If, do you want me to, do we want to do it again really quickly? Maybe with this spaceship? I'll drag this spaceship out here. How do you change the color of the rocket? Okay, so let's double click back into here, move this over. So it's the same thing. These are just shapes. You know, it's just three rectangles. So I'll click on one, I'll hold down shift and select these other two. And now let's change the rocket color to this blue color. Again, if, you, if, you, if you're not following brand colors, whenever I'm finding a color scheme, I always use this site. It's Coolers, C-O-O, here, I'll drop the link. It's C-O-O-L-O-R-S dot C-O. You can start the generator and you can just generate different color palettes with this. It gives you the hex codes right here so that you can make sure you're keeping some kind of consistent, nice looking color options, not this hot pink nonsense I have going on here. <laughs> but, you know, and even if you wanted to change these things to each a separate color, like that's an option as well. So, but yeah, so I mean, that's how the, these vector graphics are all made up of shapes. So if you just change the color of the different shapes and, and it does get a bit more complex than that, we're not gonna dive into it in this session, but using these basics we're learning here, you can use on uh, for most of your needs for e-learning projects. Oh yeah, and cool, this one is free. And it seems like there are a bunch of options for this kind of stuff. Everyone might have one that they like better. Uh, color.adobe.com is another option. Janine says uh, color mind is another option. So yeah, there are good options out there for this sort of thing. Okay, but let's get to, let's talk about exporting now. Okay, this is going to be a really important piece of this and I wanna make sure we get to it. So what we've been using now to make all of these selections, to drag this stuff around, to click into these different pieces, this is called the selection tool, okay? So you notice how it's like a black, look at my cursor and notice that it's like a black triangle pointer. That's how you know you're on the selection tool. And you can see it right here on the left. This is where you pick your tools. Uh, sometimes you might've noticed me say, oh yeah, let me, let me demonstrate this. Let me draw a square or a rectangle really quick. That's because I'm pressing the M key on my keyboard, which opens up the rectangle tool for me. And then I'm quickly switching back by pressing V. Okay. So these are important workflow tips. You use the V key on your keyboard and think of it. It's kind of like a little pointer. So V like a little pointer. That's how you get back to the selection tool. Um, an important tool that you need to know about is called the artboard tool. Okay. So you notice in this farm animal one, like there is this white background here and we can't select it. This isn't a rectangle. This is an artboard. This is how you're going to export the entire artboard for use in your projects. Okay. So how you access that tool is by pressing shift O. Okay. So I press the shift O key on my keyboard. You see now we have an artboard selected. Okay, yeah. So when I press that tool, it, it automatically shows us this artboard. You notice how I, I'm doing that as well, how I'm dragging around the screen? That's by holding down the space bar key on your keyboard. So I hold down space bar and it's this nice hand tool that I can use to drag my way around and see what's going on inside of this file. All right. I'm giving a lot of, um, throwing a lot of shortcuts at you, but these are important. I'm going to create a job aid and I'm going to share it in my Slack channel after this, just with all of these shortcuts that we mentioned. So um, if you have, if you're not in that Slack channel, I'll drop a link in a little bit. Uh, just hop in there if you want a nice PDF that has all of these uh, shortcuts. So the reason we're opening up the artboard tool is like, if we try to export this right now, it's like, oh yeah, this looks good. Let's export this. Um, it's exporting the artboard, okay? And there is an export selection option, but sometimes you might, you might 
you know, you might not have this grouped, whatever. Let me just show you what's going on here. I'm going to do shift O and we're going to draw a new artboard around this rocket ship. Okay. So now, and, and we can, I'm going to go back to shift O and if we, you know, we can move it around or let me move this around actually. Here's a good time to show off these, you know, see, this isn't really centered in the artboard. I can use this uh, um, horizontal aligned center and this vertical aligned center so that it's centered inside of this artboard. And that's going to be really important when it comes to storyline, because if you were, if I were to export this whole artboard with this down here, if I then try like centering this in storyline, it's going to look off center because it's going to view this entire artboard as the picture with all this white space around it. Um, so there are some better ways to do this. Let me drag this over here. So if you have your selection grouped like this, you can actually just do shift O and you can click on the group. So let me click on this. And now it gives you a perfectly sized artboard, you know, right up to the edges of these things. What I've done in the past, I, it, I felt almost like some of these points were getting cut off. I don't know if this is just superstition at this point, but I'll usually um, do shift O and drag it out just like very slightly. I'm holding down shift uh, and, and then alt so that it expands from every uh, direction um, by the same amount. So shift constrains the uh, dimensions and then alt will make it go to the other side as well, you see? So I just will do a very tiny bit holding down shift and alt just to give it a little bit of breathing room um, to make sure nothing's getting cut off. Okay, so you see how we did that? Um, you know, if, if this wasn't grouped, let me show you an example. I'm gonna ungroup everything on this spaceship. You know, this is good. I'll change the colors how I want. We'll change this to like a darker green. Okay, so, so, so and then I'll get rid of these uh, little diamonds. So if I'm like, okay, yeah, this looks good. Let me do shift O, let me click on this. You see, this wasn't grouped. So it just made this little tiny artboard around this single part of this object. So if we wanted to just do that click option, you've got to select it all, control G to group it, shift O to hop over to your artboard tool, and then you click it um, to, to create the artboard around it. And I just want to point out, like you might have to click it twice because when you first do shift O, it will automatically select your last artboard. So I'll try to click this. And the first thing it does is deselect the artboard I already had. So now when I click it, it will create that new artboard. Okay, so that's how that works. So watch this. So now we will export this, okay? Um, so how I do it and how I recommend you do it is by going to File, Export, and Save for Web Legacy, okay? And now we have this spaceship artboard. A really quick point about this. You know, if I clicked on this and I'm like, oh, I wanna do this rocket ship, let me just click off of here. Like, it's not going to just guess what artboard you're exporting. You have to, it will try exporting whatever artboard you last had selected. So like, if I wanna do the rocket, I'm just gonna click on this, either the artboard, you notice it has this black outline around it. Same thing here, if I click on this one, or you can just click on the, the shape, which will automatically select the artboard, okay? So that's how you know what artboard you're, you're out, you're um, exporting. A couple of key considerations here, and I know I'm throwing a lot out you, at you, but again, this recording will be available right after, right after the fact. So like, just try to work through this on your own after this. Use this recording if you need to, but this, hopefully you're seeing how useful this can be to get these nice modern graphics in your, in your projects. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining a lot of you probably know the difference between a JPEG and a ping file, but if you do not, JPEGs cannot have transparent backgrounds, okay? So you see if this white background, that will come into our storyline project with us if we're exporting it as a JPEG. And maybe I'll just show you, okay? Uh, what I'm looking at on the screen, so just so that you know, I'm looking at what type of file I'm exporting. It's always going to be the JPEG or a ping 24. Um, and I'm looking at the file size down here in the bottom left. I don't want like a, a hundred kilobytes is like the maximum I usually want these files that I'm including in a storyline course. So pings are generally higher quality. And you notice now with this ping, I can have this transparent background. So if I put this over like a black background in my storyline course, we'll, we'll be able to see that like smoke coming out of the rocket ship. 
And notice here, when I'm zooming in, it's looking a little bit blurry, right? That's because look at the size. This is the final thing I'm looking at. This is only 102 pixels wide. And again, if you're not, most of you are probably familiar with working with pixels, but this is a good thing to look at. If we go into storyline, this is just one example. Um, I'll go to the design tab and look at my story size. I can see that my whole project is 1280 pixels wide by 720 pixels tall. So I know I don't need something bigger than 1280 pixels, but 100 pixels is, is gonna look pretty small on this canvas, right? So what I would probably do is I'll change this to 500 pixels. Let's see now. So you see now it looks really good from far away. Um, when, we, when we size this down in storyline, it's gonna look super crisp and sharp. Um, 912 pixel height, that's kind of high. I probably won't need it that big. Let's just do, well, this is fine. This is only 13 kilobytes. So this is a very small file. We're not using a ton of colors here. So this is perfectly fine. And this is why Illustrator is so good because I can export this at 5,000 pixels and, oh wait, 4,492 pixels, I guess. And it will scale up perfectly because it is a vector. So the file size obviously gets way bigger. We don't need it that big. But, but if you were doing this on like a JPEG image, it would just get blurry if you tried um, sizing it up. Come on. What is the shortcut I'm looking for here? Whoops. Okay. So Illustrator wanted to crash on me, it looks like. Here we are. So I'm not gonna zoom back in. We have this at 500 pixels wide. I'm going to save it as this ping image, um, rocket ship ping. Let me just show you the example of what I meant by the JPEG. Again, you, most of you probably know this distinction, but if we were to change this to JPEG, we'll make it 500 pixels um, and we will save this. Notice it's, it's a bigger file size, um, rocket ship JPEG. So now in storyline, let's just let's just add to this. So I'm going to insert a photo. I'm going to go to, oh, not a photo, sorry. I'm going to insert a picture. I'm going to go to my the one, the two that I just exported, and I'm going to bring both of them into the project. Okay, so this is something I keep doing, which is really frustrating. Like in, in um, Illustrator, you heard me say you hold down Alt and then you can zoom in and out to zoom in. In Articulate Storyline, it's Control and then use your mouth, mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Zoom out. So it's always, it's, always, um, it's always a fun time working with both of these tools. So let me just insert a shape now to show you this difference. So you see now, right? So this is, this is the JPEG, it has that white background with it. Um, this is the ping and it, it doesn't carry that background along with it. So that's an important distinction for exporting these things. And then finally, yeah, so since this is such a nice big file, we can size this down, we can use it on buttons and it looks, it looks great, small and big, right? It has the colors we want, we can size it back up, you know. The good stuff here. So does anyone have any questions about this? And let me show you like, maybe I'll show you another screen that I did in this project um, using this approach. Or actually I think it's in a different file. Yeah, it's in a different file, the screen where I, I did another like button approach like this, where I got some consistent looking graphics and created that. Uh, maybe I could just open it up for us. Um, am I missing anything here? Does anyone have any other questions about these exporting options and how we did that? So you see here, again, we don't want that white background. We would do a ping. Um, we can size it up. And then we're just looking at this size. What you'll notice, let me show you an example here. So. In most cases, you'll want to use ping images, but if you're using like a full screen background like this, watch this, save for web. So this is, oh, I have to make this an artboard really quick. So shift O to get back to this artboard tool. Let's do that. Now I'm going to try exporting this. 
Okay. This is a huge image. Look at this, 6,800 pixels wide. It's probably gonna make this go a bit, a bit slow. Yeah, Olga has a good point here. You can export assets individually, um, export as selection. And let me show that. This is just the way I do it. It's probably, I always use the artboards. Okay, but look at this. This JPEG file, let's size this down a little bit. Let's say we want this to be 1,280 pixels wide to match our artboard. Or let's go a little bit bigger. Make sure the height. Uh. Okay. So as a JPEG, this file in its current state is 241 kilobytes. Now watch this as a ping image, 395 kilobytes. So if you have a detailed image with a lot of colors, it's probably going to be better to make it a JPEG just because of file size considerations, right? Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, but if you're doing like the individual things like we've been doing with like not very many colors, then it pings will be smaller file sizes. You won't have the background to worry about. So that's, so pings are a really good option in those cases. Um, I hope that was good enough to get you started with this. Uh, let's look at exporting a selection like Olga was talking about. So here's this little goat. Let's do file export selection. Okay. So it looks like you can export the selection, but it doesn't give you as much control. Olga, do you know if there's a way to use this legacy export option? And there are, there are different ways to do this. I just like having this more fine control. I like to see how it impacts the file size. Um, yeah, uh, Adrian, Adrian, exporting as a ping will make the file size We'll make, the, we'll make it transparent by default. But if you have like a white rectangle behind it, so for example, if we actually had a background that was white, like I just drew here, um, then it's, it's not going to be transparent. So you have to make sure that there's no other shapes in this that would be behind your image. Okay, so you can export selection for maybe a fat, so you can even right click this selection and click export selection. So this will be a bit faster but you notice it doesn't give you all the details we were seeing in that legacy export option. Um, so this is fine, but I still think I would recommend this legacy exporter because you want to be cognizant of file sizes and um, you know just getting that, that fine control over the actual assets you're exporting. And you'll get the hang of it really quick what to look for once you've done this five or so times. And you'll get a feel for the sizes you need, like 85 way too small for this artboard. If we were doing an e-learning course that was 200 pixels wide and you just press one button, maybe this little goat would be okay at 85 pixels wide. <laughs> but that's obviously not the case. So let's see. I think we have some questions here. Is this recorded? Yes, the session is recorded and you can view it as soon as it's over. And Jenny asked, do I combine different vector graphics to create custom, like a face with another body? Absolutely, Jenny. Yes, you can do that. And you'll find, um, you will find packs like that. So let's look at this. Do you see this? This is a vector pack. You can just swap out the faces onto these different bodies. And Kath Ellis, she was, I don't think she has it on her portfolio yet, but she does this all the time to make custom characters for her courses without actually building them from scratch. You just need to find a good character pack. I'm sure on Adobe stock, let's see, character pack. So you see this, like these are all vectors and you can you can pick and choose, modify this however you like. It's a really good way to build custom characters without having to actually build them from scratch yourself. So really good question there. I think that will be useful for some people. All right, yeah, the session is coming to an end. Um, if anyone has any questions or wants to see something again, just let me know. Happy to uh, dive into anything else. But uh, yeah, I hope this session was good enough to help you get started with Illustrator if you weren't using it already. Um, and just, yeah, get some efficient workflows down for working with these custom little graphics. Because you don't need to be a full-fledged graphic designer to make this nice e-learning. You know, some of the stuff, especially some of the stuff I see Kath Ellis do, for example, like, it look, it's so custom, but she's not building anything from scratch. She just knows how to use Illustrator well enough to work with these pre-existing pieces. Nice, cool. Got to hear it's been helpful for everyone. 
Oh, my Slack channel. Um, you can just go to devilinpeck.com slash Slack and it will be the sign up. Uh, if you register for this session, though, you'll get an email asking if you want to, you know, sign up to the mailing list in Slack. Just sign up to that and you'll get an email with the link to join the Slack channel. And I'll, I'll make a quick job aid listing all of these uh, workflow tips. Yeah, I'll basically make a quick job aid so that you can just quickly reference that without having to sift through this hour long recording for the shortcuts I was using and, and the keyboard stuff. So I'll just share that in the Slack channel. I'll get that ready as quickly as I can. Thank you everyone for making it live. And yeah, I'll be here if you have any questions. Um, try to join the Slack and ask questions in there though so that others can help. Thank you everyone who, who contributed and you know added some little tips and tricks in the chat while I wasn't looking. And yeah, that's, that's a wrap for this session. Thanks everyone, I'll see you. Okay, next week we're taking off uh, because it's Thanksgiving, but the following week on December 3rd, we're doing a session with Melissa Milloway, uh, a Q&A session on um, uh, just like career options, like breaking into high tech, how to move around with NID. Um, I think the session title is Career Insights with a Learning Experience Design Manager. So that'll be a good session. I'll see you in two weeks for anyone who wants to make that. And have a good rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>